Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. Welcome to a new tutorial about Gutenberg. You can pretty much code a Gutenberg block however you want. You can put it in the functions.php of your theme, you can create a custom PHP file, or you can create a plugin. For the sake of this tutorial and to make it as accessible as possible, I'm gonna simply be using the 2019 that is the current available theme out of the box in the current version of WordPress 5.1. And we're gonna extend this theme to create some custom blocks. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable, and affordable VPS in the cloud, skysail.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. Before starting though, just remember that in the description of this video, you can find the link to the GitHub repository of the Gutenberg tutorial, where lesson by lesson, I will upload all the code examples and all the files. So if something doesn't work, just check the repository. But let's get started. So first of all, let's open our code editor. And as I said, I'm using the 2019 WordPress theme and let's access the functions.php. In this file, right at the bottom, we're gonna find all the required template directory PHP files. There are custom files in order to add functionalities. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna simply require a new file dedicated to customize our Gutenberg experience. So here we can write a simple PHP comment custom Gutenberg blocks, something like that. And here we can require the get template directory, and then we concatenate with the period. And then we say that we want to require a file that is inside the ink folder. So we follow the same structure and we can call it Gutenberg, something like that. But you can call this file however you want. It doesn't really matter. Let's save it. Let's open our file inspector inside the ink folder. We're going to create a new file called, of course, Gutenberg.php. And inside here, we can pretty much do whatever we want. But before starting to create custom blocks, we need to analyze a little bit about Gutenberg and we need to understand how to modify what comes out of the box inside a Gutenberg enabled theme. So if we access our website in the administration, Heron, and we go inside a post and we create a new post, for example, and we'll call it just simply test. Here we can create a new uh, block, for example, like a simple paragraph. And if we write something, you are going to see that it doesn't matter which uh, type of block we use. This is like a heading block and this is a paragraph block. There's something going on here. First, we have a custom style that is not a default style of any WordPress theme. And plus, whenever we have something more complex. For example, if we open this and we use the cover and we incorporate a cover image from the media library, here we have some option. We have some overlay colors that are predefined. So we have a blue primary color, a secondary color, and then we can control the background opacity and stuff like that. So these are like extra options that not every Gutenberg block has. And we have the ability to globally control these options to activate some specific blocks that are not available out of the box and control the amount of predefined colors that we want to offer in our theme. So let's do it. Let's open our PHP tag. And as usual, because this is just one single PHP file, we don't need to close the PHP tags. If you want, if you want to be a really good developer, we can write down a little code block to say um, custom Gutenberg function, something like that. And you can define the package, define your URL, whatever you want to do, but a simple block at the beginning of the file. It's always good. Now we can define our custom function. So let's remember to always use a prefix that it's unique and it's not going to create any issues if another function has the same name. So I'm going to use my nickname, alicat underscore Gutenberg um, default colors. I want to start defining some default colors for my Gutenberg installation. So we saw that here when we uh, customize the color overlay of our cover block, we have these uh, four or five predefined colors. And then we have the color picker that we can choose whatever we want. But I want to change, I want to update this type of colors. And I want to initialize this with some custom colors of my choice. So in order to do that, I can simply use a built in method of WordPress called add underscore theme underscore support. And if you ever followed my tutorials in the past of my 
plugin series or WordPress 101 or the Sunset theme series, you know that the add theme support is used to activate some specific extra functionalities of WordPress, for example, the future image, the responsive images, the menus, or something that by default is not activated when you initialize WordPress for the first time. Some extra functionalities and some extra features were added to the add theme support method to support Gutenberg as well. So the theme support feature that we want to enable is the editor dash color dash palette. And as a second parameter, we can specify an array and the array will contain our full list of color. And if we want to be really good and we want to respect the indentation, when we have multiple array indentation, every attribute, every voice of the array should be on its own line. So we are decent developers. And this can be kind of confusing, but these array of editor color palette. So basically we change whatever type of colors we want to activate by default as a default available in the color palette needs to be an array inside an array. So for example, if inside this array, we can specify three colors, the white, the black, and a pink color if you want. We need to create an array, another one. And in this array, we need three attributes. The first attribute is the name of the color and we want to call these white, just simply. The second attribute is the slug of the name of the color because WordPress loves slugs. So slug and the third parameter, of course, is the color itself. And the color itself has to be an hexadecimal. So FFF, FFF. Perfect. Now that we have this, basically we're telling to the theme, hey, the default color palettes, I want just the Y to be here. To activate this function and hook it to whatever WordPress needs to be doing in order to edit what we have by default inside Gutenberg, we need to write the usual add action. So add underscore action. And the action we need to call is the in it. So at the initialization of this theme, we need to pass the name of the function that we just specified as a string as usual. Perfect. Let's save it. Let's go back in our post editor. Let's refresh. And now here, if we select the overlay, look what happened. All the other primary colors, all the other colors available by default were overwritten by our own functions. And just we have the white that we called white. And we can double check and we can confirm this by changing the name to something completely silly. For example, if we open our editor, instead of white, actually the slug should be white, not slug, sorry. But here should be um, really beautiful white color something like that, really, really silly, but just to confirm that whatever we did, it's actually reflecting in our Gutenberg editor. Perfect. So now if we want to specify more colors, we can simply and roll back this to white, we can simply duplicate this array, put a comma and specify another array with another set of parameters. So here, if I want to have the black color, oh, today, I don't know how to write, but whatever, you know, how black is written, and we can specify the 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 of colors, we save, we refresh this page. And once again, we select the cover, we have our black color, perfect. Let's specify just another color just to be sure that we can do something silly. Let's duplicate this array. Let's put a comma between arrays. And here, as I said, I want the color pink to be available because pink is flashy and I love it. And we can specify an FF4444. Perfect. Save it. Go back in our post editor, refresh, select the cover. And now we have this that is not really pink. It's kind of like reddish ish something, but whatever, you got the point. Of course, many more features and options were added to the add theme support method of WordPress in order to customize the default Gutenberg options that everyone has in their own theme whenever they install the new version of WordPress. So for example, let's take a look on how to edit the actual font size because once again, in our post editor, if we write, this is a paragraph, we have some option to customize the font size from small, normal, large, huge, and of course, everything changes accordingly, but we have the option to 
predefine also this little thing here. And the process it approach is exactly the same. So we can copy this uh, theme support and specify it inside the same method. So we don't have to add another action here. And the add theme support option this time is called editor dash font dash sizes. And on another attribute, of course, we need to specify an array of attributes in order to manage which options are available. So for example, if we want to just have the normal and large size and avoid the huge size or the small size, we can simply specify another array because WordPress loves arrays inside arrays. That's a constant of every WordPress implementation. But we can specify once again, three attributes, the name and the name needs to be something really simple. Let's keep it normal size or default, whatever you want to call it. We need to specify the size and the parameter of the size. It's a number it has to be an integer. So let's say normal is a 16. We don't need to specify pixels automatically. WordPress will add it by itself. And then once again, we can specify the slug, but you can put the slug just underneath the name. It doesn't really matter. And also this has to be the slug. So we can move the slug above here just to keep it consistent. Let's remember semicolon my PHP code fixer is shouting at me and then we can uh, duplicate this to have the large variation so large large and size let's go 24 something like that perfect so now that we did that if we open once again our post editor and we refresh now if we select our paragraph we have font size only normal and large. And as you can see here, when we select one, we have the value that we specified. So this was a really simple first lesson to see how we can start editing and tweaking and uh, touching Gutenberg from a PHP point of view. In the next lesson, we're going to start seeing how to create a custom block from both PHP and JavaScript perspective. And then we'll continue by integrating custom styles and doing something more crazy with React. If we want to dive deeper in the theme support implementation activated for Gutenberg, I suggest you check the link in the description below where you get redirected to the official WordPress documentation related to the theme support options available for Gutenberg. And it's really important you should test all these things because once you understand how something works, it's not necessary for me to show you every single option and every single variation, every single implementation. You know the logic behind that, you know how it works. Now you can check the documentation and pick the feature that you need and activate it and customize Gutenberg the way you want. Well, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching and until the next one, as usual, happy coding.